Josh, what's up, buddy? Uh, big question I want to know. Uh, what do you mention these days? And it's probably more than me, and I'm upset. And two, um, you think Lane Kiffin would go to Florida? In a heartbeat. Lane Kiffin would walk to Florida if they would wow. give him the job. I, this is not a debate. I, look, I've got Ole Miss people in my very close social circle, and they fight me on this. They're like, mm. what can you do at Florida that you can't do at Ole Miss? Win a national championship is what you can do there. And you can consistently be a player there. Um, contrary to what people believe about Ole Miss, that is still a, a build multiple years to a peak kind of program, a window program, as I call them. They're, they're not sustained year in and year out. It's not that caliber of program. Florida can be. Now, here, and I'll get back to the bench press question in a second. <laughs> He's not going to skip that one. <laughs> so so I was, I was uh, talking to – so I've talked to a couple of big agents in that world, and I was also down at Florida last week, talked to a couple of people. And it shocked me as people talk about Napier's job security and whatnot – and if that job comes open, it shocks me that there are some fairly well-known names in the coaching circles who have asked their representation, convince me that the University of Florida is the caliber of job that a Texas or a Georgia or a Alabama is. Because if I go down there, they're going to expect me to compete against them. I want I want you to sell me that this is that kind of job. And I don't know if I mean, I know you guys all lived through the era just like I did where Steve Spurrier did what he did. But Urban Meyer did what he did. And it, it's multiple times under multiple different coaches been a machine mm -hmm. and it could very well be again. So it almost surprised me. I was a little taken aback by that because I'll tell you what they had done. They had fallen behind the arms race a little bit in the mid 20 teens. And they're not that anymore. They have totally rebuilt and replenished themselves from that standpoint. It's no different than Texas A&M. It's a ready-made winner. It just takes the right hire. And Napier's got his job. For all I know, he wins Saturday and he keeps it. I'm just saying, if it were to come open, Kiffin is on the first thing smoking to Gainesville if mm -hmm. he gets the offer. As for the bench, Max, I got no clue, man. I've not maxed on bench in years. You look great. But if, but if we do want to go in there and we want to, like, we want to do the combine workout, like the mm. 225 rep thing. Okay. I could do that okay. at, at your local YMCA. I could do that. We should. I'll get a yeah. membership there pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, Blaine, yeah, Blaine's got a membership to every every gym. You should see him at Planet Fitness. Uh, I do want to say, Josh, uh, we we actually disagree here, and that's that's great. I think Lane. First off, this is the this has got the Jimmy Sexton special written all over it, all over it. If he was my agent, I'd be telling him. Hey, tell Florida I'm interested. You know what? Tell everybody you know that I'm interested because that's going to – Ole Miss got money. Like, Ole Miss has got, like, old, old, old money. So I'm going to drive that price up. My thing for Lane is this, and we were talking about this with Bill O'Brien. I think you heard us at the beginning. I actually think it would, it would take a lot for Lane to leave for a couple reasons. You've had the big brand jobs before, and those went down in flaming disasters at the end. Remember how it went down at USC? Tennessee, they, what, fired him on the tarmac – at Ole Miss right now, I think th there's more potential at Florida. That's not the argument. I agree with you 100%. But now you're at Ole Miss and you have gotten to Ole Miss. One, you can act how you want to on social media. You're the king of the city. You are the golden golden goose, whatever you want to call it. You can do it however you want. You've got the money, the NIL, and you're now showing people. And Ole Miss is becoming a sexier brand, right? Nothing is cooler in fashion. They're like, oh, why are people wearing stuff they were wearing in the 80s? Well, that's because it's cyclical. Maybe this is Ole Miss's turn in the cycle in the SEC to show, hey, man, we won 11 games last year. Now we're looking like we're going to be a playoff team and we can make a run. You can come to Ole Miss and win big. It just seems so ready-built for Lane, and, and I think he's kind of over it. But in the coaching world, you never know what's going to happen. I just think this Ole Miss job is looking sexier and sexier and sexier, not just because of that they're winning and it's going good, but Lane can do it his way. It's a Burger King situation. <laughs> oh, you're you're describing logic I agree with. I don't think Lane Kiffin feels that way. I think yeah. he would have taken <laughs> LSU. I think the way the Auburn opening was reported was badly misreported, and I think he'd take the Florida job if it were offered. But let, you're, you're describing Gus Malzahn at UCF. That's what you're describing. Mm -hmm. A guy who's had the bigger job, a guy who's got a really good situation right now, mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden UCF's a power four team um, until Arkansas comes open. Mm -hmm. And then we find out, how how firmly Gus Malzahn's roots are planted in Orlando. And then think about the chain reaction that sets off Bobby because Petrino. UCF's profile as a job yeah. is infinitely better than it was five years ago. Oh, that's, that's 100% that's really true. Up. Yeah. What's up, YouTube? Hit that subscribe button. You know what time it is.
If you already have, get somebody else too, and then tell them to get somebody else too. That's how we get hands across America.